I'm Brigadier General Steve Cheney, President of the Marine Military Academy, and I'm pleased this evening to have with us Rear Admiral Joe Horn, who, MMA class of 1976, went on to the Naval Academy, graduated from there in 1980, and then went on to a stellar Navy career and is now an active duty Rear Admiral with the Navy. And Joe, welcome. We're, we're you. glad Thank to have you, you here, and I know you've had a good look at the campus over the last day and a half plus. We're, we're thrilled, and as I mentioned before, you're the first flag officer graduate of the school. So, that, I mean, that is, I can't tell you how important it is to us in our 45 year history. Thank you. And we're so pleased that you were able to make the time to come all the way back down here. Thank you. Uh, with that, maybe we could talk a little bit about why you came to MMA and what your experience was like and how it helped you get to the Naval Academy and then further your career. Well, thanks, Steve. I, I, uh, in 1975, uh, I, I was uh, sort of out of options as far as uh, trying to, a goal that I had was to get to the Naval Academy. I had, uh, I had applied, I had, uh, I had gone through the rigorous uh, application process they have and, uh, and had found that I was a non-select. I, uh, I also wasn't going to, uh, to be able to attend uh, prep school, the, the Naval Academy prep school, or any of the foundation prep schools at the time. I was, uh, I was found wanting in all the application process. So I had signed up to go to a local college, uh, uh, a local university in Philadelphia. And that was pretty much about the way it was gonna be until my parents got a phone call from them. Then uh, Coach Jim Morton here, as a football coach at, uh, at MMA, asking if I would like to come uh, down to this to the school and he filled my parents in a little bit we had never heard of MMA up in Philadelphia at the or up in South Jersey at the time and uh, <clears throat> we were uh, my, my father was intrigued uh, we talked about it and I decided to uh, to do it so we uh, came down here in August of 1975 uh, for a year and and uh, I'll tell you the I'm convinced the absolutely the only reason that I was successful in the second go-round was uh, was the preparation that the school provided. What a super experience. Now, when you were here, you played football, as I understand it? I did. And I it was did. a pretty good team? Yeah, we, uh, we did very well. And uh, the, the experiences that, uh, that I carried from the, 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 the fellows that I met and played with, uh, many of which went to the Naval Academy with me, and so uh, we remained very close friends. In fact, uh, about five or six of them, uh, we were together two weeks ago at the uh, 30th anniversary or the 30th reunion for our class uh, from the Naval Academy. So, uh, good good friendships. That is really neat. When you were here, now you obviously had a postgraduate type education. Yes. You think that did that help at all in, in terms oh, of preparation for Navy? Absolutely, no uh, no uh, doubt about it. Uh, both in terms of uh, the math. Uh, that we took, we took a, a calculus course. So we were here, and I validated all first-year calculus. Really, uh, and I, math was never a, a strong suit of mine in high school, and so uh, I think the the preparation that we had here here was uh, was very beneficial. Yeah. Also enabled me to mature another year, I think, and uh, and enabled me to, to look at the Naval Academy and all, all the rigors of plebe summer, as you're aware, a little bit. A little bit different perspective, having come through here. Well, I would think so. when you got there, you knew how to march. So, <laughs> there was no doubt about it. It was. Uh, it was a. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I. I could have. I didn't, but I could have critiqued a, a couple of the first class that were learned, teaching us to march at the time. So it was, it was good. Graduate from Navy, obviously go into the Navy, a surface line officer, and then launched into what I would call a pretty spectacular career. Thank you. Thank you. You want to describe any of that, or I mean, I know, I know that, for instance, that you've had command of, of two major ships, a destroyer and a cruiser, in combat, uh, which defending our country, which I think is particularly impressive and unique. Uh, and I know that our cadets and families would like to hear just a touch of that because I think it would intrigue them. I, I commanded two uh, two Aegis uh, warships, the uh, USS Stout TDG-55, a guided missile destroyer, uh, right around from 1999 to uh, to 2000. And, uh, and spent uh, about 19 months in command and did, uh, did a, a deployment in the, uh, in the Persian Gulf. Uh, and then uh, deployed on, or uh, commanded the USS Lake Erie for 24 months, a guided missile cruiser, uh, which is the uh, ballistic missile defense test ship. Ah, so I got ah. to do a number of ballistic missile uh, events where we, uh, we shot down uh, ballistic missiles in the exo-atmosphere that's, that's out in outer space and then in the terminal phase inside the atmosphere as we were testing new pieces of equipment that would later find themselves uh, in the fleet. And so we as the test ship got a, got a first crack at watching a lot of this technology as it, as it was being improved and, 
and, uh, and and I think that's why I was selected uh, to for the job I currently have, which is uh, head of Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense. Pretty exciting stuff. So, now you were telling me earlier that the size of your budget to me is just so staggering. Yeah, it's a uh, it has uh, really um, the the number is uh, is incredible. But I think what's more important is the recognition by the Department of Defense that uh, that sea-based forces. Uh, can contribute in the way they uh, they are today. They, uh, sure. When you look at where our budget was in uh, in 2005, 2006, we have more than doubled the budget as we're as we're proceeding into this decade, and it's only based on the strength of the performance of the test range and uh, and what we're doing at what we're doing at sea today. So uh, we have uh, 20 ships that are uh, BMD capable. And, uh, and looking to get, by the end of this decade, up around 37. My so Lord. it's uh, an awful, uh, awful uh, good capability. And I'll, I'll brag on you just a touch to tell the audience here, with a, a budget approaching $3 billion. $2.2 billion. $2.2 <laughs> billion. I mean, th these are figures to me that uh, are hard to grasp, but let alone when they put somebody who's an MMA grad <laughs> and a Naval Academy grad in charge of that type of environment. When it's interesting you talk about exosphere, you talk about ballistic missiles. I, I equate that, bringing it back to the high school level, which isn't easy, to talk about math and science. Now here at MMA, a lot of our young lads have a little bit of difficulty with both those subjects, and it's, and it's a little controversy, calculus being one of the big ones, which you just mentioned. Right. But did, did, did taking math and science here and, of course, at the Naval Academy help you in your career, and did it here help you with your study habits? Uh, f first and foremost, um, the, I think I was able to turn a corner here, both in, uh, in the, uh, the classroom as well as in the SATs. I, I did, uh, did very well. And so when I got to the Naval Academy, uh, I, I was able to, to focus on an engineering degree. And, and that, that year here, uh, I, I really, uh, I think I really owe to, uh, to being able to, to do that. Uh, I, uh, I, to give you um, an idea, when I, I told you when, when I found out I wasn't going to go to the Naval Academy, I was going to focus on a degree in accounting. Now, there's nothing wrong with sure. being an accountant, but uh, my only reason for wanting to go to accounting was because I, I thought engineering would have been a reach. And, uh, and now here I am uh, as, uh, with a master's degree in, uh, in operations research, which is industrial engineering. So, so I owe a lot of that to the preparation that was done here. Your Naval Academy degree is in mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering which if I recall right from my days just a little bit prior to yours, uh, in those days and age, you, you could only get, if you wanted to specialize in a particular degree, it had to be an engineering degree. You couldn't, you couldn't do uh, languages or liberal arts or any of that stuff. Well, there was an 80-20 split, so, so there was 20% of the class that did take a humanities course, and I, I, I suppose I could have uh -huh. done something like that, but, uh, but I, uh, I opted to, to become an engineer, and, and uh, it, it, uh, it, I, I never looked back. I've uh, always appreciated, that was one of the decisions I think made in my life that, uh, that worked out very, very well. So. Well, that's amazing, and, uh, and I, I can't tell you how proud we are that you're where you are and we're excited about it. I know today you got a good fellow watching the football game and getting an idea what our cadets are like. I will tell you out of this current class here, now we, we have a post-grad program. It's not as um, robust as it was when you were here, um, but we're hoping to have five or six get appointments to the Naval Academy. And, uh, that's great. Uh, and, it, and it is. And, I, and you mentioned a couple of key things here. When study habits, you mentioned the SAT. And uh, we tell our young lads here, you really, you can, you got to have a good grade point average, but you really got to do well on either the ACT or the SAT. And obviously, you did do well. Yeah. People don't believe that uh, uh, when I tell them that we, we took uh, the SATs here uh, eight or nine times in that year. And the, the idea was back then, you know, you, you take, you get better each time you take them. You, your scores improve. So just take them as many times. So from the day we got here in August, until it, it was long after we had received our appointments, I guess sometime in March or April, until we left in May, we were taking the SATs, and, and the thought was to, uh, to, to get some data behind that, sure. asser, that assertion that, uh, that you'll improve, and, and uh, it's something that I've told my own kids that as they were applying for college, just to keep taking them and keep taking them, and, uh, and there's no penalty, they always take your best scores. And, That's it. And the other thing was that uh, we had classes here that were designed to focus on vocabulary, focus on uh, on how to take a test, and so uh, those those things did uh, did me well not only for taking the SATs but also at Navy and then at postgraduate school. So. Now, 
I did not write a script for him to say this. <laughs> I mean, that, that is one of my harbingers here is that it's kind of like voting in Chicago. Do it early and do it often. <laughs> you know, taking that SAT and that PSAT and get in the habit of doing it. And, you know, sometimes I get this, well, it costs 25 bucks or 35 bucks. And I kind of, hey, you need to take it Absolutely. as often as you can. It is so important. It levels the playing field. And our young lads here, as you're an example, do so well on it. Uh, in comparison, certainly to the national average, we're we're excited about that. It's a uh, very rigorous test, and, and you, you need to uh, you need to do it a couple of times. Sure. Really. How did you balance playing football and taking calculus at the same time, doing doing your academics? Gosh, it it, it really wasn't that difficult because here. Uh, the focus was uh, study first, it was on academics first, and then uh, after the academics were over you were really kind of looking for that break to get out and do some athletics and, and, uh, and so the, the program was uh, we broke in school from school in the afternoon at about three o'clock and we went right to the practice field and we were there until, uh, until chow time in the evening and so it was a uh, it really wasn't, uh, wasn't an issue about uh, one or the other. Went back to the, uh, uh, to the barracks in the evening and you know, you did whatever academic work you had to do to prepare for the next day. Well, and it isn't interesting. 34 years later, yeah. it's still the same. I mean, it's still the same. They so break it about three. Formula. formula works well. It does. Yeah. And, you know, you come back at night. We call it CCQ, close call to quarters, study hall in our vernacular. Uh, and, and I get this a lot of time. Well, I can't do football and I can't study simultaneous. And I go, better learn to do it here. Because if you think you're going to do it in college, it's going to be a lot harder in college. With that, let me, let me wrap up here for a little bit. And just Is there anything that you would like to tell the cadets or families uh, about MMA and what they ought to be, what they ought to be focusing on while they're, while they're here? Well, first to the families, uh, the sacrifice that you make in uh, not only uh, in sending your son to, a, to an institution like this for, uh, and for a period of time is, is well worth, I think, the, uh, the both the, the financial obligation as well as, uh, as you know, doing without them for, uh, for a period of time. Uh, they, certainly what I, what I learned here benefited uh, my career and, and my life, quite frankly. Uh, and for the cadets, I, I, I would tell you to dream big dreams. 34 years ago, I, I was uh, uh, in, these, in the same seats that you're in today. And, uh, and I'll tell you, it is a, um, as I look back on it, first it went by in a flash. And second, uh, I appreciate everything I learned at, uh, uh, here has benefited me one way or the other, and not only in the United States Navy, but in life as well. So I, I wish you well, I, uh, and uh, good luck in all your future endeavors. Take it to heart, please. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. You're the man. <laughs>